Okay, now we're up to division. Many of you remember that poem you perhaps learned in middle school. Yours is not to reason why, just invert and multiply. Actually, I hate that poem. As math teachers, we do want students to reason why. We don't want them to just blindly do something because we told them to. So today we're going to learn how to divide with pattern blocks, and hopefully we'll answer that question. Why do you invert and multiply? That is, how can we do division with pattern blocks? First of all, let's talk about division in general. Let's take a simple question. What does 36 divided by 4 mean? Well, one interpretation, and a good one, is how many 4s does it take to make 36? It would take 9 of them. What does 81 divided by 3 mean? How many 3's does it take to make 81? So any division problem can be thought of as how many of the second number does it take to make the first number? So this one we might say, how many calves does it take to make a hokey? So on to fractions. Again, we're going to think of this as that it Example, how many one-sixths does it take to make one-half? Or in terms of pattern blocks, how many triangles does it take to make a red trapezoid? Well, the answer is three. It takes three triangles to make a red trapezoid. So the answer to this problem must be three. Of course, if you use the technique you were taught, invert the second number and multiply, top times top, bottom times bottom, you're going to get six halves or three. But this time we're not thinking of it as just a rule. We're thinking of it as how many of the divisor, the second number, does it take to make the first number? Now remember that as we go to other examples. How many one-thirds does it take? to make that? Well, if you use your imagination and place that blue block on top of the green triangles, you would see that certainly it takes two of them, and it also takes half of another one. Two there, and then half of another one. So the answer must be two and a half. It takes two and a half blue rhombuses to make that shape. Of course, you can also do it the traditional way, and you're going to get the same answer. How many of these does it take to make that? Well, the answer is it doesn't even take one of them. It takes less than one. It only takes part of the red trapezoid to make a blue rhombus. How much of it does it take? It takes two-thirds of it. So the answer must be two-thirds. Of course, when you do this tra the traditional way, invert the second number and multiply, you'll get the same answer, two-thirds. How many of those does it take to make that? All right, how many of the divisor, one half, does it take to make the dividend, two thirds? Well, I think you can see it takes one of them for sure, but then we also need part of another one. What part of the other one do we need? We need a third of the second one. We need one whole one and a third of the next one. So the answer must be one and one-third. One-half divided by one-third. We're going to read this as the question, how many one-thirds does it take to make that? Well, it's going to take three of them to make the yellow hexagon. It's going to take a fourth one to make up part of the red trapezoid. 
and then we're still going to need part of another one. So it's going to take more than four of them. There's the four, and we need half of the next one. So the answer must be four and a half. Now, I'll admit that when I do this with students, they'll get the four part okay, but they'll see that triangle left over, and they'll say, oh, that's a sixth. But again, we're, we're not thinking of the, the triangle as being uh, one-sixth. We're thinking of how many of those blue rhombuses must I uh, take to make an original shape. It takes four of them for sure, and it takes half of the fifth one. So the answer must be four and one-half. Another example. How many five-sixths? which remember that looks like a Pac-Man shape. How many of those does it take to make this? Well, we can try fitting our pieces on top. And when we do, there's one. I'm going to move that one piece over here and see that it takes exactly two of them. It takes exactly two five-sixths to make one and two-thirds. So the answer to this problem better be 2. This is a tough problem when you do it the traditional way. You've got to convert the first number to an improper fraction. You have to invert the second fraction and multiply. But you will get 2 when you do it the way that you were taught. Now, I need to warn you that in the examples you've seen for multiplication and division, these examples were hand-picked. Hand-picked so that the answers would turn out to be shapes we could make with pattern blocks. You can't just randomly pick two fractions and expect it to do the multiplication or the division with pattern blocks. For example, if we took a third times one-third, well, your answer is one-ninth, and we don't have a fraction block that represents one-ninth. So I've got to be careful not to make up a problem in which the answer is one-ninth. All of my examples in this presentation have been hand-picked. So do you understand fractions better now that you've seen them with pattern blocks? I hope so, although I will tell you we're going to look at them with a different model in the next lesson. See you then.